So let's tool up with some mining weapons and overthrow some oppressors in the name of the Star Gods with a discussion of talking Gene Sealer cults in Warhammer 40k. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we're talking Gene Stealers, and in particular getting a Gene Stealer cult army off the ground from a standing start. In the video we'll talk about why you might want to start an army of these mutated mining saboteurs, go through a few ideas for planning out an army, looking at a few reasonable first purchases, and look over the combat patrol box set, and then some ideas for expanding an army and one example list. Loads to talk about, so let's jump straight into it. So first up, why might you want to collect a Gene Stealer cult army in the first place? In the lore, these guys are basically a twisted and corrupted human populace, rising up to cast down the Imperial oppressors, and await the coming of their mysterious foretold star gods, which when it happens turns out to be a bit of a mixed blessing, as of course they are the Tyranids. They're a dark corner of 40k lore that's got some real representation on the tabletop now, an army that had some models in 40k's distant past, but then went out of production for a while and came back. The way a cult starts is that a patriarch makes landfall on a planet and then begins subverting the human populace, getting a core of followers through psychic and genetic manipulation, and from there a twisted cult blossoms, with many generations of mutants being spawned in the dark corners of the hive world under wraps. Then when the time is right and the coming of the Tyranids is at hand, typically the cult will unveil itself, throwing itself and all of its resources against the planet's ruling overlords, and typically making war with a mass of mutated abominations, and also a heavy use of brutal improvised mining weapons that are typically used to cut through hard minerals, but will do a Space Marine's power armour in quite nicely as well. They may have been fighting with a planet with generations in the making, but typically they will often be fighting up against a superior armed foe, and make great use of ambush tactics, and dragging down elite forces that are on paper far better trained than they are. Really quite an interesting army, and functions a bit differently in the lore to most of the other factions in the game. As for their miniature range, they have a nice and pretty recent 40k range, they're certainly one of the newer factions to the game, I believe around about 5 or 6 years ago if memory serves, coming back towards the tail end of 7th edition after a long hiatus from some classic models as mentioned. In general that means that the entirety of the range pretty much is in new snazzy plastic kits, certainly no bad thing throughout 40k, I guess technically the oldest models are the standard issued gene stealers that they have, they're really quite an old kit, but if Tyranids receive a major release at some point, they're almost certain to get redone. In terms of models wise, the range is one of the smaller ones in Warhammer 40k, a slightly more niche faction, but really quite a lot of individual unique character models. I feel like they do have enough miniatures to feel like a whole army, and they can date detachments of Astra Militarum on the size to bulk out numbers a bit if you want a bit more variety. Miniatures wise, here's just a few examples of models from the range. We've got a drill dozer bladed Goliath rock grinder on the top left with that massive great big drill blade, plus a clearance incinerator on the top, some Athlan Jackal kind of dirt bike type things. They zoom around throwing demo charges all over the place, the Kelamorph heroic cowboy style pistolier with three different revolvers to go at you with, and a mutated aberrant with a great big power hammer. In general the aesthetic is of looted mining gear, combined with Tyranid style mutations on normal humans, a lot of them do have rather big heads, going part way to being gene stealers I suppose. I feel like as a model range they might be just a little bit polarising, some people really like the aesthetic, whereas some people it just doesn't really quite do it for them. Gameplay wise, the faction is really quite an interesting one, they have make a big use of guerrilla warfare tactics with a whole ton of sneaky tricks, lots of things that break the normal game rules and allow you to get the first strike on your opponent. I feel like the codex is a very well written one by Warhammer 40k standards, most of the units are really usable, and they've got a bunch of really powerful sneaky tricks that they can use, but the units are pointed to reflect that, and it means that you might be paying a bit of a premium for their units, but they're usually worth it a bit more because of the crazy things that they can do, like getting big damage boosts when they come in, or popping up in places that they really shouldn't be able to reach. You can also play the cult in a couple of different ways, I feel like you can really lean into ranged crossfire type shooting and get lots of buffs like that on the go, with things like the jackal bikes and plenty of vehicles, or you can go properly melee with them, take twisted helix, and have big strong mutants drag the enemy down, whether they're aberrants, pure strains, or acolytes. In general their style is though that they need to really capitalise on getting the first strike and then hiding well. If things don't go amazing for them, most of their units are quite fragile, and do get taken out fairly easily in return. Currently, for their in-game strength, I'd say they're medium to perhaps slightly weaker on the power curve currently. People have made them work in Nephilim, but I feel like you really do need to play them very intelligently to get good results on the table. You need to make good use of terrain and have every single unit trading out really well with the enemy to keep them on the back foot at all times and score enough points before they catch up with you. 
maybe a little less forgiving to new players, but have a lot more potential if you master them. Finally, price-wise, I would say that Gene Steeler Cult are among one of 40k's more expensive armies to collect. A lot of their units are new snazzy plastic kits that cost quite a lot from Games Workshop, but don't actually add up to having that many points in game, so you need quite a lot of them. The one saving grace of the army on this front is that the Combat Patrol box set that they come with is actually a really very good one. We'll go over that one in a second, but it's a box that contains the majority of core units of the faction, and you could easily pick up multiple copies. Moving on, presuming that you do want to collect a Gene Steeler Cult army, there's definitely a fair bit of planning and research that you can do before you jump into models and things. Perhaps a fairly simple place to start might be the Faction's Codex. It does give you a fair amount of info between things like the army's rules, the lore and background of the various different cults and the way that they operate, plus a bunch of painting galleries for a bit of inspiration. The Codex is usually £32.50, €42.50 or $55 from Games Workshop. Otherwise, for messing around with lists and rules, you could think about Battlescribe, Warpedia or Games Workshop's app for looking at rules and trying to piece some things together and potentially have a play around with the rules in-game, maybe with Tabletop Simulator or proxying some models to try them out. YouTube, I think, is a really valuable resource for learning about any army as you get into it. There's certainly plenty of Dean's Dale Cult content out there. I have made a few focus reviews on the channel here, reviewing the Codex, a unit tier list, and more recently, a slightly more up-to-date guide as to playing the faction in 9th edition, and I'll link that one down below if you'd find it useful. Otherwise, you can check out battle reports for seeing how units actually come together and interact on the tabletop. There's plenty of painting guides for getting them looking good, and loads of lore videos for how they work in the background. Finally, for research and things, I'd certainly be aware of social media and websites and things. There's a dedicated Gene Stiller Cult Discord server, there's Facebook groups and subreddits to the faction. Those places can just be really good for imbibing knowledge about an army. Seeing people talk about the faction between model collecting and in-game stuff, and also ask a few basic questions if there's anything that you're unsure about when you're starting out. Usually there's all manner of experienced players just falling over themselves to help out newer players with questions. Otherwise, when you're actually planning it as to how to get an army together, you could think about what sort of cult you specifically want to be running yourself, whether you're going to be dedicating yourself to one theme out of the lore or on the tabletop, or whether you're going to be going for a bit more of a balanced force that does a bit of everything and shows off the faction in its entirety. In terms of in-game rules, custom cults tend to be fairly strong right now out of the rule sections. There's various combos that work quite well, but ignoring the penalty to hit with industrial weapons is quite a nice one. That can typically be quite a good base for a shooty cult, or if you want to go full melee, then getting extra strength and movement with Twisted Helix is also very solid. You could definitely build around certain themes for the army, maximal use of crossfire for example, with lots of seismic cannons and jackals and things, or perhaps armor heavy lists with a bunch of goliaths and rock grinders maybe, or perhaps an army that really leans into the cult ambush and have lots of melee threats popping up close, things like acolytes and gene stealers making 7 or 8 inch charges. I'd probably start the force actually focusing on the gene stealer cults themselves, but at a later date you could also think about adding in a few brood brothers if you fancied a bit of variety, maybe some gene stealer march lehman rust tanks or something along those lines. I'd be quite tempted to plan out a draft 500 point list to get some combat patrol games going on, and maybe a rough 2000 point target list for just your rough idea of where the faction might be headed, but with a good mind to making revisions as you learn more about the faction and get some games in. Otherwise, besides planning an army list, it would be worth painting up a test model or two. I'd say perhaps the best thing to start with is a standard acolyte or neophyte, something at least reasonably basic and low effort, where you can make some changes and revisions if it doesn't come out quite right the first time. You could definitely seek a bit of inspiration on YouTube from that, and maybe make some changes to make your cult colour your own. In general, no one tends to be too bothered at which cult has which colour scheme for Gene Stiller cults. You certainly could copy one out of the law, but most people aren't going to know the difference between one and another when they put them on the tabletop, so I wouldn't be too stressed about just using whichever rules you like, despite the colour that you've painted them. I think perhaps in particular for Gene Stiller cults, contrast paints do tend to work quite nicely on them, there's quite a lot of material and exposed flesh and things, both of which work well with those. Plus the models are really quite detailed and a little bit on the fiddly side. Can be a quick way to pick out all those details in one fell swoop. So after planning an army and getting some idea of where you're going, you could think about first purchases, likely the Codex and the first sets of miniatures. I would pick up the Codex fairly early on. It is the book that gets all the faction rules for playing them in game. And in general, it seems to be at least reasonably up to date right now. Games Workshop does have an FAQ document for it on their Warhammer community website, ironing out a couple of issues. 
points cost can also be altered in Warhammer 40k. Might be worth checking out Games Workshop's Immunitor and Field Manual download. That should be in the download section of their Warhammer community webpage, just to make sure whether anything has changed at the time that you're watching this. If memory serves right, then I believe that they have fairly similar points cost to when the codex dropped, but I suspect that they will be getting changes in January when the next issue of that download comes out. I strongly suspect that Aberrants will be getting a small buff, and maybe there'll be a few other changes. If you want, you can also add in a detachment of Brood Brothers from Codex Astra Militarum as well. The current rules, you'd just need to have their Codex. I feel like they're going to have to FAQ it a little bit to fit in with the new Astra Militarum book, which comes out shortly, but could be an interesting option for plundering once we do have the updated rules. In general, you don't normally want more than 500 points of guard in the Gene Stealer Cult Force, though, otherwise it ruins some of your faction rules. Otherwise, besides rules for the army, there are of course the exciting models. I would be very, very tempted to start out with Combat Patrol Gene Stealer Colts, which we'll look at next. It's just very good value compared with a lot of the rest of the faction's box sets, and it includes some of the most core and interesting units in the book. There might be some other older discount box sets that we'll talk about in a second as well, start collecting Gene Stealer Colts, and a few old versus boxes. Otherwise, if you didn't want to take the plunge on a £90 box set, then just something like some standard troops wouldn't be a bad place to start. Either Neophytes or Acolytes will be my best bet. Both of them are currently really quite usable in-game. And finally, for a bit of leadership for the cult, another box set that I would get very, very early into collecting them will be the Brood Coven one. That one gets you the Patriarch, Magus and Primus that you can see here on the right. And in terms of Games Workshop's deals for characters, this is actually about as good as it gets. Three characters for the cost of the box set is a lot better than the usual £25 or 30 something dollars they charge for one and gets you actually a sizable amount of points on the tabletop, as well as your HQ slots filled. They're kind of iconic characters in the lore as well. I think it'd be a bit weird to have an entire Gene Stealer Cult collection, but not a Patriarch, even if they might be just a little bit take or leave in-game. When buying Warhammer 40k miniatures, I would always be aware that there's usually cheaper ways to get it than directly from Games Workshop. It's definitely not a wrong option, it's often the fastest and more reliable way, depending on exactly how convenient it is, and they'll typically have more things in stock than most other places. Otherwise though, I typically usually go through a local gaming store or a third party discounter, say for example Element Games here in the UK, they're one that I've got an affiliate link for down in the video description, I will usually give you the same models but 10-20% to off Games Workshop's prices, they're just the same models, so it's a pretty easy way to save a decent amount of money. There's plenty of other alternatives though, so I'd certainly give them a search as to the options near you. Otherwise, I'd certainly bear in mind the second hand market, eBay is often well worth a look, you can get some second-hand models that might have some variable quality, but save you a lot of time and money. And in particular, if you just want one of the copies of something out of the Combat Patrol box, there's a pretty reasonable chance that you'll be able to get it cheaper than you would from Games Workshop, just due to people breaking down the kit and selling off bits of it. Might be handy enough if you wanted another squad of Aberrants or another Rock Grinder, for example. These days, 3D printing is another very viable option. Lots of places make alternate sculpts of various different armies. There'll be plenty of suitable mutants and cultists to count as proxies in there. And it can be good for different weapon choices or themed bases and things. And finally, with Gene Stealer Cult in particular, I think that it's a good army that lends itself to conversions. Say, for example, you could make a Astra Militarum type force with a whole bunch of extra limbs and things to represent the different units. Or you could certainly go for something even wackier. I've seen a few people attempt Gene Stealer Cult type orc forces, and there's plenty of opportunities for some pretty hilarious units there. Moving on to that Combat Patrol box, though, this is Combat Patrol Gene Stealer Colts. From Games Workshop at the moment, it's £90, $150, or €120. Euros. And in the box, you get the Major Psyker, 20 Neophytes. 5 Acolytes that you could also build as Metamorphs, 5 Aberrants, and a Goliath Rock Grinder that you can also build as a regular Goliath truck. I feel like out of all of 40k, this is one of the better Combat Patrol box sets out of any of them. You get a lot of units on the table here, and usually these models are really quite expensive individually. It uh, represents around about a 46% discount compared with buying them on their own. I do quite like the unit variety here as well. You could easily get two of these box sets and maybe convert the mages into something different, and that will get you a pretty excellent starting point for a cult. In game terms, pretty much the entire box is very, very usable. Maybe the aberrants are a little bit more subpar at the moment, though that can always change. And I feel like it's really quite a good move on Games Workshop's part to have a pretty affordable gateway into the faction, Otherwise, I feel like a lot of people might have just been put off by the intimidating prices. Overall, though, I would just say that this box set, accompanied by a brood coven, that would give you a pretty decent way to start the army, just maybe convert one of the maguses into something different. I would also be aware of the previous discount boxes that Gene Stealer Colts have had. 
They have been in rather a lot of them. Games Workshop don't stock these anymore, but you might well find them occasionally going up for sale on eBay, or you might find them at third-party retailers that just haven't sold them since they bought them. The previous Star Collecting Gene Stealer Cult box set was quite a good one as well. That one has the Acolyte Icon Ward as the HQ in it. One squad of Neophytes and one squad of Acolytes, always going to be useful plus the Achilles Ridge Runner rather than the Goliath. If you happen to find one of these going at a reasonable price on top of the Combat Patrol box set, again, the two are quite reasonably well paired, not having overlaps with the HQs or the vehicles. Otherwise, the Gene Stealers have appeared in three different previous Versus box sets, Games Workshop sets where they have one army fighting off against another. Death Watch Overkill is going back away. That one was the initial Gene Stealer cult launch with a bunch of their models against a Death Watch kill team. There was the Tooth and Claw box set within 8th edition, Space Wars vs Gene Stealers, that was the one where the Abominant was introduced, plus the multi-part Aberrants. And there's also the more recent Shadow Throne one, that one's got the Brood Coven, the Reductor Saboteur, and I believe some Neophytes fighting against the Adeptus Custodes. Bit of a weird one that one, maybe not a terrible start to Gene Stealer cults, but a bit useless if you've already got a Brood Coven. So in general my recommended start for an army would be the Brood Coven and the Combat Patrol box set, Plus, of course, anything in particular out of the miniature range that really inspires you to collect the army. When it comes to expanding the force in different directions, I do feel that in general, Codex Gene Stealer Cults is perhaps one of the most balanced that Games Workshop has released in all of 9th edition. The vast, vast majority of the units are very useful, there's maybe just a few ones that aren't quite outstanding. If I were to start the army completely from scratch, these would likely be my first ports of call though. I'd certainly want a decent contingent of troops, both Neophytes and Acolytes are very usable right now, and very dangerous in their own way. Though I feel like my first way to start building those up would be to get a set of the Combat Patrol box sets, or maybe two. I might not be too adverse to actually converting a few extra Acolytes, perhaps out of spare bits from their kit, and the Pure Strain Gene Stealers perhaps. You could certainly upgrade a few Neophytes with a fair bit of chopping and sticking. I do find the Acolytes are just really quite an expensive box set for the amounts of points that you get in the box for how much they cost, only being 5 models. Otherwise, for really solid ways to push out the army, I'd be very tempted to pick up some Atalan Jackal bikes fairly early. A couple of small units is a real asset to a list, just zooming forward and screening out the enemy, and potentially mauling enemy outlying units as well. They're just all around a strong unit at the moment, fast, tough, and actually quite brutal damage against light infantry too. I'd also certainly think about pure strain gene stealers, Within the roster at the moment, if you want to play a more optimised list, one big unit of pure strains is pretty much in auto-include territory. Use the proficient planning to give them the upgrade where they either get a pre-game move or get to return to the shadows, and you basically have a unit that you can't really lose with. If the opponent gets first turn, they just vanish off the board and come down to cause problems later. If you get first turn with their pre-game move, they get a first turn charge. Really brutal with a crazy amount of high AP melee attacks, Really nice for Twisted Helix in particular. Otherwise, for a bit more onboard presence, I'd be tempted by a couple of rock grinders or maybe some trucks to cart some neophytes or acolytes around. Both the Goliath variants are fairly balanced and usable, and I've seen a fair few people using Achilles Ridge Runners for a first turn alpha strike, jumping around the edge of the army. The Gene Stealer Colts do, of course, have an enormous cast of supporting characters as well. I'd say at time of recording, perhaps some of the most important that you might want to have might be the Nexos for command point farming and laying down crossfire markers. They kind of more for just brutal pop-up damage and assassination shenanigans on enemy characters, and maybe the Sanctus as well for a bit of similar duties, and also can put out crossfire markers at a long way with an auto-hitting sniper rifle. It is quite nice to have a codex where the vast majority of units are very usable and relevant. When expanding armies like this, I typically aim to do so in small chunks, buying units individually or a couple of the time, not overloading yourself, and then getting them painted up and on the table for some games before moving on. It can just be a bit intimidating if you just get yourself a massive horde of grey plastic. It can just feel like you're not making much progress when you're painting things. Finally, I thought we'd just round up with an example of a 2,000 points strong army list. This one is perhaps the one that's had the most success in Warzone Nephilim so far, designed and played by a chap called Eric Lathoris, who used it to take first at TNA Open 2022. This one's run with a custom cult with a whole bunch of different benefits, including industrial affinity to ignore the penalty on industrial weapons like the Neophyte's seismic cannons, war convoy for a feel no pain on the bikes and the vehicles, and a couple of others with a minor durability and melee buff. It's run in a single battalion, and the main theme of this list is just bikes to the max, Three huge units of Atalan Jackals, which maybe isn't enormously normal for Gene Stealer Cult year lists. They take two Wolf Crods in each unit with the Incinerators, and two Demo Charges for some drive-by blowing things up. They are pretty efficient units to be fair, though more typically see play in a bit more of a Scout and Outrider type role. Otherwise, there's just a whole bunch of good Gene Stealer stuff here, 
the Icon Wars to allow for some easier charges out of Deep Strike and regenerating models, a Primus to buff your damage, a Clamavus to hold down objectives and take your oppressor's bane to hand out some crossfire tokens, a Kelamorph the Pistolier with the great big worm tooth rounds that can have them punching through heavy infantry no questions asked, a Nexos with some cranial inlay, that's a relic that allows some command point farming, and it can broadcast crossfire markers and buffs across the board. There's also a Sanctus with a sniper rifle, and the from every angle trait proficient planning. Then for the rest of the list, there's a whole stack of troops, two huge units of neophytes with shotguns and seismic cannons, one taking lying in wait to pop up close, and one a perfect ambush for crossfire. They'd be really quite nice and quite easy to get the crossfire rule on. That unit of 10 pure strain gene stealers with the pop up rule where they can go back into reserve or get the pre game move. A smaller unit of neophytes with the seismic cannons, and then a couple of small destructive units of acolytes with a single hand flamer in each. Finally, there's three mighty goliath rock grinders for a bit of melee threat and some heavy seismic cannon extra shooting. This list really is quite a shooty one all in all, I think. I guess they could be potentially transporting the Acolyte hybrids to jump out for some objective secured in the mid-board as well. Overall, looks like a really fun list to play in my opinion. Lots of decent shooting, and I think the fast-moving and relatively hard-hitting biker units will be a blast to use. I really quite like all the proficient planning upgrades that let you break the game rules in various different fun ways. Still an army that needs to be played very well to get decent results with, of course. Even things like the bikers just aren't enormously, enormously tough for the cost, and you need to think about which units you sacrifice when, and which ones you risk exposing to take return enemy fire. So anyway, we'll leave that there for a bit of an introduction as to starting collecting Gene Stealer Colts. As always, let me know your thoughts down in the comments below, and in particular, any insights into collecting the army, anything that's worked really well for you in getting a force off the ground and functioning on the table. I certainly look forward to hearing insights of other experienced Gene Stealer Colt generals. If you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to Auspets Tactics, where I'll certainly keep the regular videos coming. And if you would like another video to watch, feel free to check out my whole game overview of Gene Stealer Colts, which I made around about a month ago before this. It drills down a lot more into the rules of Gene Stealer Colts, what works and what maybe doesn't work quite so much. Otherwise, if you have enjoyed the video, I would just like to quickly mention the Auspets Tactics Patreon page as well, which you can find links down in the video description below as well. The channel's Patreon page is what allows me to keep on making videos like this quite so regularly, particularly ones on niche factions like Gene Stealer Colts. If you have been enjoying a lot or have found some good value from the video, any support is enormously appreciated. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early each week, regular votes to see what sort of things happen next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.